אלה הדברים אשר דיבר מוישה אל כל ישראל בעבר הירדן במדבר וערבו מוסיף בן פרון ובן טפל ולבן וחצר Without a doubt, the greatest legacy of Solomon for the people of Israel is the construction of the temple. Today we see in the place, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, with the Dome of the Rock. Solomon's reign became the most important empire in the history of Israel. The greatest splendor, riches, power, and legendary wisdom from God were the characteristics that made some detractors affirm the history of this king as a myth. But also, his fall, the division of the kingdom, and idolatry, led this same king to commit the worst pagan atrocities, which ended up breaking his empire in two. David as king, had managed to conquer twice the territory of his predecessor, his father-in-law Saul. The Ammonites, the Moabites, the Edomites, the Syrians, and the Amalekite lands were annexed to the empire that David left to his son Solomon. While the Philistines, weakened and defeated by Israel, paid tribute to the Davidic empire in order to maintain their autonomy. For their part, the Phoenicians of the Northwest were strong commercial allies, so only the Egyptians could hardly be a small threat to the empire, something that Solomon would solve politically, marrying the pharaoh's daughter. In that way, the empire seemed completely stable and functional. By the time of David's old age, the eldest son, Adonijah, tried to seize the kingdom with the support of two reference of David's reign, General Joab and Abiathar the priest. His plan would have been possible had not the prophet Nathan warned David along with Bathsheba, who immediately ordered Benaiah, the head of his guard, to escort Solomon with a garrison with the Palidios and the Salidios. The Sarids and Pelathites were Philistines who were in David's guard. They would take care of the prophet Nathan and with the priest Zadok, so that officially, in the name of the king, they would publicly proclaim Solomon as the true heir. When Adonijah found out, he was afraid and decided to hold on to the horns of the altar. In this way, he ensured that he would not be murdered for treason due to the Mosaic Law's prohibition against shedding human blood on the sacrificial altar. Solomon then guarantees him that he will not die if he recognizes him as king, but warns him that the death sentence is a possibility if he finds him in some new conspiracy in the future. Solomon reigned with David as regent, which may have helped him learn from his father's years of wisdom. David's final advice, we see it in chapter 2 of the first book of Kings. I have little to die. Be brave and behave like a man. He obeys all the commandments of our God, and all the laws, which he gave us, through Moses. If you do this, you will do well in everything you do, and everywhere you go. God promised that the throne of Israel will always be occupied by my descendants, if they behave well and are completely faithful to him. So behave yourself so that God fulfills his promise. Also, as you know, Joab the general killed Abner son of Net and Amasa son of Jedher. These two were generals in the army of Israel, but Joab killed them in peacetime to avenge the deaths that occurred during the war. Then he made me responsible for that double crime, but he is the guilty one. So the decision is yours, although I would advise you not to leave him alive for too long. After David's death, Solomon felt that the only threat to his reign was embodied by the trident made up of his brother Adonijah, the priest Abiathar, and the general Joab. 
It was only enough for Adnija to ask Abisag for his wife, the young woman who cared for David in his last days, for Solomon to pronounce the irremissible death of his brother, possibly because Solomon had remembered that Absalom did something similar, with the concubines of his father David, in public, when he tried to seize the kingdom. In turn, this triggered Solomon to want to fulfill his father's last command, about putting Joab to death. General Joab was Solomon's cousin. Sarbia was the mother of Joab, and she was the sister of David. Knowing this fact, we can understand why on many occasions, we see Joab's insolence towards David. His relationship presupposes David's pre-election for Joab as a nephew, whom he maintained as general until his death. Joab, like Adonijah, clung to the horns of the altar, but this time Solomon ordered Benaiah to assassinate him right there, to avenge the murders of Abner, who was Saul's general, and of Amasadab, who was the general that David had chosen, until Joab killed him. As for Abiathar the priest, Solomon cast him out of the priesthood, sending him to his native land. Finally, Solomon ended up executing Shermay as well. Shermay the Benjamite was an agitator who at the time David fled from Absalom, made a public show of repudiation, throwing stones at him and cursing David and his entourage. After these incidents, and after his marriage to Pharaoh's daughter, Solomon could now take care of building the temple that his father David designed for God in Jerusalem. At that time, high places were common, which were sacrificial altars to Jehovah, outside the tabernacle. Although they were not allowed, Still at that time these altars had not become places of idolatry, as happened some time later, which made God end up despising these places of illegal sacrifices. Solomon offered sacrifices on an altar in Gibeon, which was 10 kilometers from Jerusalem. There God grants him in dreams, the request for wisdom that he made to him. In a context of abundance and stability, Solomon's wisdom as a judge became famous on earth. One of these trials is with the lawsuit of the two prostitutes. What happened was that two women who had babies had gone to sleep. One of them had crushed her own child, and had exchanged it for the living child of her mate, while she slept. Then, the mother, who had not crushed her baby, found out about her and took her to court, accusing her partner. Solomon then argues that the fairest thing, faced with a dilemma without any evidence to compare, was to cut the living baby in half, and each would get half of the child. But the true mother, moved by love for her son, reacted by giving her baby to her opponent, which made Solomon understand that only a true mother would be willing to abandon her demand, in order to save her life. So Solomon returns the baby to her real mother, the one who accused her mate of crushing her child and making the change. Because of her wisdom, the Queen of Sheba decided to meet Solomon, and some assume that the Song of Songs is a poem by Solomon to the Queen of Sheba. While 1 Kings 4.32, he tells us that he wrote thousands of proverbs. But without a doubt, the greatest legacy of Solomon for the people of Israel is the construction of the temple. With the help of Hiram, king of Tyre, Solomon began construction, which would stand for more than 400 years, until the Babylonian invasion and deportation in 585 BC. The size of the temple was 27 meters in interior length, 13.5 meters in height and 9 meters in width, approximately. Here we see a 3D representation, in which we see the sacrificial altar prominently. Inside the sanctuary, there are the golden candlesticks, the table with the showbread, and the veil that separated the holy place from the holy of holies. In the most holy place was the Ark of the Covenant, built in the time of Moses, 
in where we see two cherubim. There, the high priest entered once a year to expiate the sins of all the people, in the mercy seat, which was the lid of the Ark of the Covenant. At the dedication of the temple, Solomon gave a powerful speech, in which we can read his knowledge of God's promises. The speech turns into a fervent prayer. However, King Solomon loved many foreign women. In addition to Pharaoh's daughter, he married women from Moab, Ammon, Edom, Sidon, and the Hittites. The Lord had clearly instructed the Israelites when he told them, don't marry them because they will turn your hearts away to your gods. However, Solomon insisted on loving them. He altogether he had 700 royal wives and 300 concubines. In effect, they turned their hearts away from the Lord. When Solomon was old, they turned his heart away to worship other gods, instead of being totally faithful to the Lord as God as David had been to his father. Solomon built those shrines for all his foreign wives to burn and sacrifice to his gods. The Lord was very angry with Solomon, because his heart had turned away from the Lord God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice and had specifically warned Solomon not to worship other gods. Therefore, the Lord said to him, Since you have not kept my covenant and disobeyed my decrees, I will certainly tear the throne from you and give it to one of your servants. But for the love of your father David, I will not do it while you live, but I will take the throne from your son. Then the Lord raised up Hadad the Edomite, who was a member of the royal family of Edom, to be Solomon's adversary. He also raised a grappling hook as Solomon's adversary. Reason had fled from his master, the Hadad king Ezer of Soba, and he had become the leader of a band of rebels. Rezon and his men fled to Damascus, where he became king. That he was a deadly enemy of Israel for the rest of Solomon's reign. Another rebel leader was Jeroboam, one of Solomon's own officials. This is the story that explains his rebellion. Solomon was rebuilding the ramparts and repairing the walls of the city of his father David. While Jeroboam was leaving Jerusalem, the prophet Aiah from Shiloh met him on the way to them. He wore a new cloak. The two of them were alone in a field when Elijah took the new cloak that he was wearing and tore it twelve into pieces, then told Jeroboam to take ten of these pieces because the Lord God of Israel says, I am about to tear the kingdom from Solomon, and I will give you ten of the tribes. But I will leave a tribe to Solomon, for the love of my servant David and for the love of Jerusalem. For Solomon, he has departed from me, and worshipped Ashtoreth, goddess of the Sidonians, Chemosh, god of Moab, and Moloch, god of the Ammonites. Solomon has not followed my ways, nor has he done what pleases me. He, too, has not obeyed my decrees and ordinances, as his father David did. However, I will not take the entire kingdom from Solomon for now. For the love of my servant David, whom I chose, and who obeyed my commands and decrees, I will keep Solomon as leader for the rest of his days, but I will take the kingdom from his son. According to some theologians, the book of Ecclesiastes is attributed to the last years of the king's life. The Book of Kings mentions a book of the Acts of Solomon, which has not reached our days. After 40 years of reign, Solomon died, leaving his son Rehoboam as king of Israel, in a context of instability that would end with the breakup of the kingdom later. While his son would rule two tribes in the kingdom that from now on would be called Judah, Jeroboam, whom Solomon wanted to kill, was made king of Israel, the remaining ten tribes, 